There's one difference between life and stories. Stories are created, but life just happens. And life is not something that happens to just humans. Everything that has a beginning and an end has a life of its own. Now, where exactly does it begin and where it ends is probably something we'll talk about some other time. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of a place in Kolam district, somewhere in the southern part of Kerala. It's Kerala in its raw character, far away from the tourism circuit. One of the most beautiful places I've been to, but also unfortunate at the same time. Seven AM, Monroe Island. I'm about to meet Praveen, who is a storyteller from Ten Days. I was in Dubai for ten years. Now, I came back here representing Ten Days here, uh, and the way we are uh, taking the guests as like a storytelling mode, you know, and explain about how what is Monroe, how's the lifestyle in Monroe. The Mandro Island itself, it was not an island before. The canal Mandro was came here in Mandro, and he make a new river. It's called Puttanar actually. Puttanar means in the sense of Malayalam, Puttanar means new river. Then only this uh, part is become an island. So the place name is become as Mandro Island actually. We took a boat and went through those stunning narrow canals and I got to taste what God's own country really is. This was something I had never experienced, although I had been to Kerala a few times before. It was like I had found a treasure trove that I had been longing for. And still uh, we have his uh, bengla still there and the churches they made in the 80s, 70s. That church still uh, in the same, they didn't make any changes still. The people used to believe and pray there, even Hindus, there is no, nobody's thinking about the religion, caste and all. Same in Kerala, everywhere in Kerala. That. So is, it, is it more like that they are following Hindu traditions or they do? No, they are doing uh, as per the uh, Christian traditions. But the, uh, all the things is taken care of uh, by the Hindus people. The good thing in Mandro, it's not become commercial still. It's still a village life is uh, going around. That's what we want to keep. But the government also, what we are trying to keep, keep the Mandro as same as it is now. That village life, people want to see the village life, village traditions. Before actually, or the lifestyle or the job or the income, everything was related to coconut and uh, kair making. But now the things have changed, you know. Uh, 
the coconuts are not that much like before. Most of them are without head now. Uh, this is one of the island. Uh, it was affected by the global warming. Actually, the high tide level are going up, and the sea level also going up because of the global warming. So it will come up to this point. That's like one foot in that house, maybe more. So this house is comparatively safe. It was not safe, but now they, like, you know, they built a new water. Yeah. So for them, it's a daily thing, you know, just seeing the water come up and go down. Even they can fish from there. Are you careful? Yeah. There's a school actually. People use this boat to go to the school. There is no other way to reach there. So Only the, the place we are walking on right now, does this come out of water in the morning? Yeah, or? in the morning in the low tide it, it will come out. Okay. In the water. And uh, this is also a area normally the tourists are not coming this area. Then they, they never see this beauty. The normal tourists uh, they don't have access to come here. But we used to take the people here only, these mm. hidden areas. When beauty and tragedy go together, it becomes a story unlike most others. The treasure trove I had come across was sinking and it was sinking real quick, leaving the people of Munro with little options. Now at least they made this road. They can walk and go to their houses. Otherwise they would have to walk in the yeah, water. Of course, what in, the, in the water only. And it was made around one year before. Oh, is it? The previous time we used to come for fishing these areas. It's very difficult to come. So how long ago was this issue first? You know, uh, it's uh, actually it, it, uh, it, it's showing after the tsunami. Pre uh, before tsunami, the high tide is not that much. That bigger. much. After tsunami, the high tide levels are going up. Okay. And the global warming actually that is the one. So, uh, so the term global warming is something that they used to use earlier <coughs> but now what they use is climate change why because overall temperatures are of course rising but we are seeing that uh, some places there are abnormal things happening yeah. winters are also getting colder at pe uh, mm. places where there was no snow earlier mm. we are getting snow at those places also the climate uh, is totally changing what they had before right now it's entirely different now we are affected that what in the, when i am a child hmm. in march april those time is the vacation time hmm. we'll go to the cricket uh, cricket field and we will play from morning to still the evening hmm. that time the sunlight or the heat of the sun it's not that effective yeah. but now the now the children they can't go out from the house yeah. i feel it's something uh, the temperature is like similar to middle east now To be fair, along with climate change, the presence of a dam nearby as well as the 2004 tsunami have contributed to the current tragic state of Munro. Scholars and institutions are researching on this, 
Meanwhile, the authorities are helping people to construct houses made up of lightweight concrete blocks and better toilets. In conventional toilet, there is a uh, septic tank this like. Mm. After two or three years, it is cracked and uh, directly leached to uh, uh, pollute, uh, pollute come to the water. Mm. This uh, after this uh, water from the sock pit is uh, river quality water. Because of the global warming issues was reported all the medias, it was mentioned as a singing island. So people want to see the singing island. People used to come here. The pictures of Monroe Island was spreading out uh, in the social medias. The people are realizing there is a big scope of tourism. And the other thing is the, uh, the people are looking for the next income, what they can do in Monroe. So the thoughts are going to the tourism directly. So from that day, it was started with the one home uh, homestay. Now in Monroe, we have 40 homestays and the numbers of visitors coming in every year. It's become one of the top 10 in uh, Kerala now. Munro needs people. It needs people who are willing to discover the treasure trove first hand and dive into the beauty as well as the tragedy of this island, of course by making friends with the locals. What we understand from last eight or nine months, the people like to see the local village life and how the people are struggling to leave such a place everywhere water, but there is not a single cup of water to drink. That was the issue here in Monroe. Everywhere is water, but there is no water to drink. Life on Earth has been around for millions of years, having seen its fair share of ups and downs. One thing is for sure that life right now is changing faster than it has ever changed in the past. What is the future of our planet will depend on the path human choose from here on. That day, the reflection of coconut trees in the water beneath me, the sound of paddle hitting this still water, sound of the distant birds and the smiles of the people of Munro. Somehow, all of this got permanently etched into my memory. Hi folks, this is Ayush Dinkar. This video was done in association with a company called Tendays, which is an experiential travel company based in Kerala. Uh, they have their own set of storytellers and they take you around and show you their own world from their own perspective. I had a great time working with them and I definitely recommend you check them out. Stay safe, travel safe, see you soon.